guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. First of all, let me apologize. Uh, content has been a little inconsistent lately. I've been having a hell of a couple of weeks. Work has been super busy, which is good. So thank you, all, all you guys, for supporting me, of course. Um, but I that means YouTube has taken a little bit of a, of a back seat. But I'm, I'm back, I've got time. And I'm ready to start cranking out the content again. And today, guys, I want to talk about five major luxury watch brands that lose a ton of value. And that you probably shouldn't buy them new. Now, this doesn't mean don't buy them. If you like them, buy them. That's always what I say. Screw the value. If you like it, buy it. But there's a smart way to buy it and there's a stupid way to buy it. And these fall into preferably buy them at a deep discount or buy them pre-owned. Now, of course, uh, there's many more brands that lose value that gain value. I mean, uh, only really Rolex, Patek Philippe, some Omegas, some Panerais, uh, FP Journe, Carrie Voodoo Linen, um, you know, some, you know, some Longes. These brands tend to, to do pretty well in the value sector, but most brands don't. So this is only a list of five. And I'm going to make this a video series, I think, where I'm going to name more uh, more and more brands. So if, if the brand that you think is not on the list, you know, probably just hasn't made it there because there's 40 or 50 brands, maybe even 100 that lose a ton of value. I just want to talk about five major ones in no particular order. And I almost forgot. Customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Panerai PAM 111 Luminor Marina. A watch that I may be getting rid of at some point, and I certainly haven't been wearing it a lot, but I decided to wear it today. Why not? I mean, it was one of my first loves after all. The first one, well, we're going to go with one that is hurting pretty bad right now, and that is Breitling. Breitling, a perennial powerhouse, used to be right up there with Rolex and Omega in terms of sales figures has taken quite a bit of a downturn. Um, and that kind of started happening right when they released their in-house movement. I don't know if those two are correlated because I think their B01 movements are awesome, but that is right about the time it started happening. Now under new management from uh, Mr. Kern, George Kern, ex-CEO of IWC, hopefully the brand sees a resurgence. But right now in the market, we've seen a lot of closeouts, which is when stock is dumped on the gray market or to pre-owned dealers, brand new at 20 to 30 cents on the dollar. Uh, we're seeing Breitling pop up in uh, stores like TJ Maxx, of all places. Um, and you can really, really get them at a deep discount. Does this mean they're a bad watch? Absolutely not. But this does mean, in my opinion, do not go to a Breitling boutique and shell out 10 grand for a Chronomat B01 when you could probably get it for 4,500 brand new uh, somewhere else, maybe around five grand and around 4,000 used. So yeah, Breitling, don't know what happened there. Used to be a huge brand, still is a huge brand. I'm not saying they're, they're gone or anything, but certainly a turn of events. Next is a brand that has started doing better in the value uh, aspect, but it's still not great. And it is a brand I love very much, and that is Zenith, world famous watch brand makers of the El Primero and maybe the only thing they're really known for even though recently they've been coming out with some awesome new watches. That's uh, a nod to you guys who designed the Defiant Zenith, good job. But a brand that hit the US market early due to copyright issues with the name Zenith and when they did come they came uh, with some pretty crazy designs under a uh, you know, CEO that didn't do too well named Thierry Nataf. Brand was pretty much destroyed, and now it's coming back. Fantastic watches. However, they can be had at deep, deep discounts, and that is what I suggest you do. In fact, an El Primero is going to make its way in my collection at some point or another. And, of course, we also have Ulysse Narden. Fantastic uh, watches. Just started investing into in-house movements. Very big in Russia particularly, but when the Russian economy tanked, so did the brand, and uh, that should be a lesson to you guys that put all, a lot of brands put their money in the Chinese basket, and uh, you know, when that 
the whole Chinese thing crumbled. Made a whole video about that, by the way. Uh, I'll link it right up here. Yuli Stardin did that with Russia. Russian economy collapsed, not selling that many watches. Now they're dumping a ton of stock stateside. Great opportunity for you guys to buy pre-owned or uh, gray market through channels you trust, of course, not all dealers are created equal. Now we're going with a brand that is also pennies on the dollar, Balm & Mercier, a brand that did not get any love, which is strange because I think their new Clifton collection and Capelin collections are beautiful, absolutely gorgeous watches. Yes, they're at a base, but they're also not terribly expensive. Uh, watches that should be competing right there with Longines, even maybe a little higher end than Longines, can be had for almost nothing. So if you guys are on a budget and are looking for a very handsome, dressier watch, take a look at B&M Bum at Mercier. And now we have another brand that's taking a little bit of a beating, maybe not as much as the rest, and this is more of a recent thing because the brand was very, very hot until recently, and that is IWC. Now this is the classic uh, turn of events where brands price themselves out of the market. The Portuguese Chrono, I think, hit $7,900 at one point, uh, and they just got too expensive. Beautiful watches, but too expensive for what they were. Prices are slowly coming down back to earth. The brands are reducing. The brand is reducing the prices, but that is a very slow and gradual process. But what that does also mean is pre-owned, maybe with the exception of the Portuguese, they can be had for steel, especially the Da Vinci, the Aquatimer, and um, b -b -b the Engineer, of course. Uh, which is a shame. The pilots and the Portuguese are still relatively hot. They've seen a dip as well. But if you guys like IWC, great heritage, make fantastic watches, these two can be had at a lower price. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to do this kind of market watch video. I thought you guys might find it useful. I do these from time to time, and I'm thinking of turning this into a series where, you know, once a month or so, I'll talk about five more brands that if you guys are interested in buying, you should probably pick up pre-owned because uh, they depreciate highly. Now, of course, there's a ton of other brands on this list. Don't freak out if I didn't mention them. Corum, Chrono Swiss, Volcane, Gerard, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, but of course, no time to list all of them into one video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss any content. And of course, check out DelrayWatch.com, my website where I buy, sell, and service pre-owned watches. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with me for another episode of Federico Talks Watches, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.